sustainability requires collaboration and you, you just see that come, come up in every simple aspect, right? Within your company, you requires collaboration to get all the data you need and externally. Speaking of sustainability, a podcast where we talk to front runners, innovators, and business specialists on, well, sustainability and where they think their industries are headed and more importantly, how they can make them more sustainable. Hi there, this is Hani Larma from EcoChain and in today's conversation, I'm speaking to our very own Sas Laquist. We have a very important topic today. We are discussing something that people contact us about all the time, which is data and specifically what we call an LCA, primary and secondary data. So we talk about what these are, what's the difference and how should you be using them. Stay tuned for the conversation. So hi Zasla, thank you so much for joining me today in our episode. Hello, honey. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, it's nice to have you <laughs> returning for the third time. We have a really important Hi. topic today to speak about. It's something that keeps coming up in the conversations that we're having with people in the field, sustainability managers, among other people online. So we thought it's a really good thing to address the issue of data and what type of data do you actually need? And also, what is the difference between what we call primary data and secondary data? So it's a big topic. I think it would be great to break it down uh, into kind of smaller bits and pieces. So Zas, could we start out quickly with just explaining what is data? What data are we talking about here? What is data? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> one of the main questions we have. Now, of course, data is a very broad topic. And right now we're going to focus it back to environmental data, right? So if we're talking about a, a life cycle assessment, which is um, a scientific method that allows you to calculate an environmental footprint of a product or multiple products or a process. Yeah, you need, of course, input data in order to get footprint results. So that's the kind of data we are talking about. This data, you can call this, yeah, the necessary input data that's then connected to impact references, basically, and give you the results of your footprint. So to kind of put that into short, it's environmental data on your products in its materials, processes, anything that's related to kind of making the product and also the type of data that you would need in order to make the product more sustainable and calculate kind of those different impact hotspots and also where the biggest change can indeed be made in terms of sustainability. Yeah, exactly. And I think here, of course, there's a difference. We, we say environmental data, but environmental data is, of course, what you get out of your footprint, right? That's the environmental part. And for data to become environmental data, indeed, you need um, energy use, like of your processes, like what kind of materials, are you using in your production? How many? What are they made of? You know, all these things together, they go into an LCA, very simply put, and out comes the environmental data on your product, basically. So your footprint results. So how can we kind of differentiate between primary data and secondary data? And yeah, what are they actually? Very good question. So we just discussed that basically to get your environmental data, right? So on your product or products you need to put in data into a life cycle assessment, right? So this input data, that's where the primary versus secondary data all like taps in. So it's basically, it basically comes down to the quality of your data. That's really simply put, right? Because there's indeed more layers to it, but high quality data goes in, high quality environmental data goes out, right. low quality goes in, low data goes out. So it's just a little bit how it goes. And this is kind of where the primary versus secondary comes in because I have a definition. So the European Commission says that primary data, so an LCA, is data that's directly measured or collected from a specific facility or a set of facilities. So basically it's like really raw, accurate data that's directly collected, right? By either you, when you own your own manufacturing site, for example, then you know, okay, this is my manufacturing site. I'll just ask the people that work there for me what goes in, <laughs> what kind of emissions go out. So this could be, for example, electricity use or how much water is used in yeah. um, the production of genes, for example. Yeah. So right. it's really raw process and raw site-specific data, raw data on, you know, the exact, like how your materials that are necessary for production are built up. Um, and often then this comes into the whole 
value chain, supply chain part, right? Because there's a lot of companies that don't own their own manufacturers or they buy their materials from suppliers or they have to put their, you know, they send their products to distributors or so this is kind of where it gets a bit sketchy, right? Mm -hmm. Because this input data, there's only so much that a company might be in control of, right? So what data can do you actually have access to? Mm -hmm. And this is a really important part, right? Because that means that if you are more in control of data then and you can access it, then immediately this input data becomes of higher quality. But if you don't, then you are dependent on others. and. Others, yeah, it can go very slow for suppliers to give you all the information you need. And that's where secondary data comes in. So basically, it's secondary data kind of functions to fill the gaps of primary data you don't have. So that's just very simply put, right? So primary data means really raw, accurate data on every aspect of, you know, what's necessary to make your product, to ship it, to like get the materials in and to get it out again to your you know, to the, to the stores, for example, that's all raw primary data, but you don't have access to all of it. So sometimes before you do, you need to rely on averages and that's kind of what secondary data means. So to fill the gaps of data you don't have, you need to start somewhere, right? And that's what we often see also with companies who are, you know, starting out is that it's very difficult for them to already in the start, right? If you're starting with sustainability, like actually making it measurable, to already have all your suppliers on board and have all the information from them that you need. And that's why in LCA, they, you know, we're looking for a solution. Okay, how can we get people to start? So how can we get people to already start measuring and at least have an indication of where they're at and then start filling the gaps basically from there. Right. So secondary data, it's databases that have been set up by researchers, a lot of universities. Yeah, there's a couple of databases, for example, we use one of the biggest, which is EcoInvent, and it kind of did a lot of work for you already. So it's, it's already collected, measured, average data that you can use. For example, if you don't know a specific material or where it came from at one of your suppliers, then at least you have something that you can already model to give an indication of, okay, might this be something where my impact comes from function? Right. So kind of to sum it up, the primary data is the data that you're in control of. You have that data. It's uh, your, if you have your own manufacturing facility, you would already own that data. If it's your suppliers, you don't yeah. have access to that data. So then that's where yeah. secondary data right. comes in because you don't actually own that data. And until you do, and until you're in control of it, you have to use secondary data to fill that gap. Exactly. Yeah. So in that sense, primary, secondary, you know, first types of data, second types of data, it's actually really makes sense. And the most important thing is, is of course, that primary data is way more accurate, right? So because it's actually, you, you've measured what's actually going on. And that's also a big, a big change between secondary data, averages. You, they can get you a long way, but never as far as if you have yeah. indeed primary data for your input. Exactly. That's also why the primary data and secondary data are used different ways in LCA. Of course, we would always prefer that primary data is used, but as you mentioned, no. that's not always possible. Um, and therefore, it's really important, especially when you're making claims about the sustainability measurements that you've made, that you kind of define which data you've used. So are you in control of it? Is it the primary data? Is it something that your suppliers own and you haven't yet been able to exactly. harness in your yeah. measurements? As we already said, right, if you, you know, realistically look at where companies often start, yeah, you won't have all the primary data you need often, right, in the beginning. Some companies do, which is great because they've already done a lot of prep work or indeed what you said, they have way more access to this primary data, like direct access. But if you don't, that's okay, right? Just be transparent about it. That's basically how LCA works. Again, it's the data that goes in and that results in a certain quality of data that goes out. And if a company starts out using secondary data, that's completely fine because in the end, it will already give you really great insights in finding out, okay, where does my biggest impact come from, right? right. So 
even if you rely a bit on averages, you'll always have certain materials that will have higher overall average impacts than others. So you already can see in your first measurement, all right, apparently these kinds of materials that I'm using are causing my biggest impact. This is great information because now I can actually go to that specific supplier because they're worth my time the most, right? They, I need to prioritize them and ask them for well, inventory data. That's already great. But of course, the best, the very best would be if they could give an LCA for their own products, right? right? Because then you have everything you already need and everything becomes a lot smoother. So it's a great start. If you're communicating about your first measurements or maybe your second, always pretty transparent. Hey, we're really working on getting our suppliers on board. This data that we have now is, you know, partly based on this primary data that we already have, but we're missing this. We're focusing on doing that now. This is what we measured. Yeah. Just be transparent about it because it's okay. You have to start out somewhere. Exactly. And especially that kind of starting out somewhere. So if there's a company and they have, uh, they don't have most of the data, let's say they have, they're in control of some of their product data, but you know, they have several different suppliers, for example, where mm -hmm. they need to collect different types of data. We often mention that it's quite okay in that part, especially to start off with that secondary yeah. data. So the databases that you mentioned earlier, for example, EcoInvent, yeah. which is based off of scientific research. Um, so they are accurate in that sense, but they aren't the primary yes. data that we would prefer. Um, but in this case, they could, for example, uh, find out those impact hotspots, as you mentioned as well. So they know, okay, the polyester exactly. is the biggest impact in this t-shirt, for example. And then from there, they could try to find those suppliers, which are supplying the biggest impact hotspots and try to work with them and try to gather the more yeah. accurate data from those suppliers and be able to work together with them. You're absolutely right. Uh, it all comes back to that sustainability, just like everything else, right? In any, any development within your company that's strategic or any, any innovative strategy, it goes in steps. You can't get from point A to Z in one go. Like it's, it's very difficult, realistically, of course. Some companies, they have indeed more access and they have more prepared or because they have more access, they were more prepared. That's great. So you can already start at point C, for example, instead of A. But yeah, sustainability requires collaboration. And you, you just see that come, come up in every simple aspect, right? Within your company, you, it requires collaboration to get all the data you need and externally. And that's something that we see that keeps on coming back, right? So over the next couple of years, you'll see more and more hopefully, right? More and more companies really engage their suppliers in, all right, please give us the environmental data, but also give value back mm -hmm. because it's, it's not one-sided in the end, because that's also another part where it For often sure. goes wrong. How on earth do you get your suppliers to be, you know, interested to actually give you that data? So we could do a whole other podcast about that. For sure. But it, ju it just shows that you know, sustainability often goes within steps as well. I did a really interesting thing podcast with uh, Oh My Bag mm -hmm. and the sustainability manager there mentioned something really interesting yeah. that they actually have, well, they already have very strict criteria for which types of suppliers they work yeah. with, but they also foster relationships sometimes for years before they oh, actually even start working with the supplier. And apart from that, once they've started work with the supplier, they also give guidelines, mm -hmm. they do checks both ways. So the supplier can give feedback to them on their processes and their ways of working. And they really want to foster that kind of mutual sustainability benefit, yeah. uh, which I found really cool. What do you think is the most important thing when keeping these relationships with suppliers going to be able to kind of get that accurate uh, data from them. What do you think is the most important there? Well, it's kind of what you already mentioned as well. And what Oh My Bag Man also mentioned is it's indeed the, the value because I mean, yes, a lot of companies are starting out with sustainability because they also feel they have to, right? For the planet. But a lot of companies, they might not be ready for it yet, which is, I mean, logical. If you see, you know, not, not our entire economy is ready for it yet. So then it, it then it might be different for suppliers in what kind of value they see in giving you this data. 
So it, of course, also depends on how much power in the end you have over suppliers and indeed how you approach these relationships. If with Oh My Bags, you focus on creating high quality products, then indeed focusing on maintaining good relationships with your suppliers, it's going to benefit them, right? Because you want to keep them for a long time. So for them, it's like, oh, okay, if I'm going to give you data you need and I'm going to go through that effort, I'm going to get something in return because we're focusing on a product. We're developing products over the years. You know, we're, we're really looking at improving and improving. And then my data is actually useful as well for me to right. improve my products. It should be a win-win <laughs> in a way um, that if they provide you with this data, then you can give something back. Indeed, a long-term relationship, a better contract. And that is really important in the end. Sustainability should be business, right? It's part of business. So let's, let's make it that way. So to kind of sum up the conversation, Zasla, what were your three main takeaways from this conversation? If there's someone who's listening and they think, okay, I still want to kind of refresh what was primary data, what is secondary data, and how are they used? Uh, what are your three main takeaways? All right, so primary data is highly accurate raw data that you've measured directly from facilities or multiple facilities from your processes. So it's, it's really high quality data. It's really accurate to your products, right? And some of this data, it might be in your control or not. You need to get primary data from suppliers, for example. So that's primary data. So if you don't yet have all this primary data in the beginning, then you need secondary data. And secondary data are these impact databases, basically, that you know, are already preset. They're scientifically researched. And we also, for example, have the biggest database in our tools. And then that can be used to fill the gaps that you don't have yet. All right, so that's, that's the, the main difference between the two. So then the second takeaway, basically, is that you want as much primary data as possible. Let me put it that way, because quality input results in quality output. The more primary data you have, the more accurate your footprint results will be, which is super, of course, because it gives you way more credible footprint results, way better insights on, okay, really specifically, where can I focus? And of course, <laughs> it doesn't get you into trouble if you don't uh, communicate about it well. So, all right, so that's main takeaway. And takeaway three is it's okay if you don't have all the primary data already at the beginning, that's okay. Because it's very realistically, you might not have all this information from your suppliers in the beginning already. So then secondary data works great to make your first environmental footprint results. But if you communicate about it, always be transparent in the amount of like the percentage of primary or secondary data that you're using. And that's very important. And always see it as a, in, you know, the journey. <laughs> you might start out with more average results in the future or in next year. You might have primary data from at least two suppliers already. Yay. That's progress. But always be transparent about it. Well, I think that sums it up perfectly. Thank you so much, Sasa, for joining this conversation today and speak to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this chat. If you enjoyed this episode, please click here to subscribe or here for more recent episodes. Bye-bye.